The kitchen. It's where all our favourite things come from, like hamburgers, spaghetti and creme brulee. Ooh, creme brulee. You tap that golden crust with your spoon and the gooey sweetness just spills out. And then all of a sudden there's that smell. Oh, that smell. <clears throat> the kitchen. It's great, but in the wrong hands, it's a death trap. What kind of a monster could do this, you ask? What kind of a sick, twisted mind could turn the place where creme brulee comes from into a horror movie? A monster like... Scott. Scott is a student cook. Or Claire. She's also a student cook. Scott and Claire seem harmless, but if they do not follow safe work practices in the kitchen, they're potential killers. Let's start with clothes. Scott's baggy top may be what he calls fashion, but it's what I call a kitchen disaster waiting to happen. If a baggy sleeve or a hoodie drawstring should dangle over an open flame, it'll be Scott rather than the steaks that ends up well done. Better. Your shoes are also a problem though. Well, I say shoes. It's the kitchen, not the beach, Scott. We wear sturdy, lace-up shoes when cooking to protect our toes in case we drop a pan. There we go. I don't know what you're smiling at, Claire. You're almost as dangerous. Lose the chewy for starters. We don't need gum in the gumbo. Your short hair's not bad. With longer locks, we'd need to tie them up. But your shirt is also a problem. Sleeveless tops leave your arms vulnerable to burns from splashes, steam, or contact with anything hot. Good. You know, I think we're actually getting somewhere. <sighs> oh dear. I spoke too soon. Show me your hands. Have you come straight from a car repair video, Claire? Those hands are filthy. Wash them in soap and water. And you can wash yours too, Scott. We wash our hands before preparing any meal, not just when we think they're dirty. While you're washing, you should also remove your rings. Claire's rings, Scott. You don't want to lose them, and your guests don't want to find them going down their gullet. Now, let's see you. Hmm, not bad. Once you're each wearing a washable apron and plastic gloves for hygiene, I think we might actually be safe to start cooking. What could go wrong now? A lot. This is not how we want our meal preparation to end. Cuts can be avoided by observing a few basic rules. Select the appropriate knife for the task. Scott, that cleaver is too clumsy for small ingredients. Try Claire's knife instead. Uh-uh. When passing a knife, offer the handle, not the blade. A blunt knife is a hazard, so check it's sharp before using. So, the lesson is never test sharpness using your fingers. Use some food. Hold it, Claire. When wiping a knife, have the sharp edge of the blade pointing away from your hand, or you may encounter a fate similar to Scott's. Good. She has checked that the knife is sharp. Note the position of Claire's fingers on the food, with the fingertips curled under, Note also she is using a board to cut on, not the expensive bench. Look how she has placed the knife, correctly lying flat on the bench. Never like this. For pumpkins and large gourds, use a heavy knife. To avoid nasty accidents, never play pranks in the kitchen. Got that, Claire? And Scott, avoid carrying knives with other equipment. And never, never, never carry a knife with the blade pointing forward. Now, shall we try that again? 
this is the correct way to carry a knife. By the way, where are you going with that, Scott? Oh no you weren't! Imagine what might have happened if you threw it in there! Store knives away in racks when not in use. Broken glass or crockery should be swept up immediately. Avoid picking it up with your hands. Gather small pieces with several layers of cloth or disposable towel. Then wrap those in layers of paper and throw it all in the bin. In summary then, to help prevent cuts, select the appropriate knife for the job, use food to check sharpness, use a board and never cut towards yourself, Offer the handle when passing knives. Do not throw knives in the sink. Wipe knives with the sharp edge pointing away from your hand. Place knives flat on the bench. Never play pranks in the kitchen and always carry knives with the blade pointing downwards. Store knives away in their racks and attend to breakages immediately. To complete our list, here are a few extra tips. Remove foreign objects like skewers from food before using a chopper or cleaver. Don't attempt to work on frozen meat. Never throw knives or attempt to catch a falling knife. And always, always concentrate. If a minor cut does occur, rinse the wound under cold water to remove any particles of food or dirt. Then cover it with a dressing from the first aid kit, which can be found in every safety conscious kitchen. For deeper cuts, medical advice should be sought from a qualified first aider, nurse, or doctor. A burn is caused by dry heat and can be avoided by using an oven mitt or thick, dry cloth. Do not use a wet cloth, as heat quickly converts water into steam. To avoid handles becoming hot, take care not to leave them over hot elements, nor should they hang over the edge of the stove as they could be easily knocked. Very good, Claire. But you should remove metal objects like that ladle from hot foods immediately, so they don't become hot as well. And if you know a utensil or pan is likely to be hot, warn others who might handle it. And here is a perfect example of why it is important for tops to be close fitting. What might have happened if Scott was still wearing the baggy hoodie we first saw him in? If clothing catches fire, act immediately. Don't run or wave your hands about. The casualty, yes Scott, that's you. Lie on the floor and be covered with a fire blanket. A scold is caused by wet heat. To avoid scalding, lift lids of hot pans away from you so that the steam escapes without reaching your face. Notice Claire does not lean over the equipment and takes care to pour slowly when straining food so as to avoid splashing hot water. You're getting pretty good at this, Claire. When opening ovens... Very good, Scott. He stood to the side to avoid any heat that may escape from the oven when he opens it. And remember, when removing hot food from the oven, set it down on the stove or nearby bench to avoid carrying it around the kitchen. Oil and water do not mix, so wipe moisture from food before putting it in the frying pan. Remember, always cool food before tasting it. Oh no you don't, Claire. We don't double dip the spoon without washing it in between. Use two hands to carry large containers, but never overfill with hot liquids. In the case of superficial burns, hold the affected area under cold running water for at least 10 minutes. For serious burns, immediately seek assistance from a nurse, doctor or qualified first aider. To avoid fire, never leave cloth or paper near naked flames. It's too late, Scott. I saw it. If lighting a stove with a match, strike it before turning on the gas. This is especially important when lighting a gas oven or grill. 
Fat should never be left unattended. If a fat fire does occur, in no circumstances put water on it. The liquids will mix and the fire will spread. Instead, turn the heat off and cover the pan with its lid. This will deprive the fire of oxygen, extinguishing it. Fire extinguishers, which every safe kitchen must have, should be checked regularly to ensure they are operational. Electrical equipment in the kitchen helps make cooking easier, but they can still be very dangerous. What? It's true! Allow cords to become wet or stand in water while using them and you could be in for a shock. Use equipment with frayed cords and other faults and you could be in for a shock. Use equipment with wet hands and you could be in for a shock. Hang on, I'm sorry. I'm just saying be careful the equipment is in good condition and not near water. You can still use it. Besides, you can't stop now. I haven't finished giving you your safety tips about it. Plug the machine into the wall, then switch it on. When finished, do the process in reverse. To avoid injury, never put fingers near blades. Use safety equipment when necessary. Never use a knife or other utensils to retrieve toast from the toaster. In case of electric shock, do not touch the victim until the power is turned off, as the current could be transferred. If it is not possible to switch the power off, use a non-conductor such as wood, rubber or rolled paper, or yes, even a broom, to push the victim away from contact with the current. Stay with the victim until medical help arrives. If you know CPR and the patient needs it, administer it immediately. Always observe correct lifting practices. Here's how not to lift from an oven. Lift correctly like this. Firstly, ensure both hands are free. Bend at the knees and use both hands to remove the dish. <sighs> Scott, you need to go back and watch this whole video again. We can't end a discussion of kitchen safety without mentioning hygiene. Here are a few things to remember. Keep food out of the danger zone between 5 and 60 degrees Celsius to stop bacteria multiplying. Thaw frozen food in the fridge, not on the bench. Cook foods thoroughly. Use separate chopping boards for meat and vegetables. Don't let meat juices drip on other foods. Throw out foods which have reached their use-by dates. Clean up the kitchen as you go. Wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly. Wash your hands with hot soapy water after going to the toilet, blowing your nose or touching your hair. Cover up any cuts on your hands. And of course, store poisons, including cleaning fluids, well out of the reach of children. Or Scott. Finally, always obey these golden rules. If you knock or spill it, wipe it up. And if you drop it, Pick it up. Finally, never leave cupboard doors or drawers open. And never run in the kitchen. By observing basic kitchen safety standards, accidents will be avoided, ensuring you will have a killer meal uh, without killing the cook. Bon appétit. See, you really should have made creme brulee.